This is the new Sofern SP35 they sent me for review. Uh, this is just the box. I've already taken out of the box just to make it easier. So we've just got the manual, user manual, and it has English, Russian, and I think German. Uh, here are the specs here. So it has uh, impact resistance of 1 meter and an IPX rating of 8 for up to 2 meters. Um, then you've got the you've got your modes and your smooth ramping and USB-C charging. Put that to the side. We've got the lanyard and two O-rings, just the standard USB-C cable and the light itself. Uh, the double-sided clip wasn't installed. It was just loose in the box. Um, I just didn't want to risk scratching the anodizing. I don't think it would scratch. I just didn't want to pull it on, put it back just in case. Uh, so yeah, here is the light. Um, so this is the first model that Sofern have used with a double-sided clip. Uh, it's quite nice. Nice and um, firm. Good knurling on the on the battery tube. Um, we've got a resin side switch. It's good for uh, trying to so you're not trying to find it in the dark. Um, it's got a battery status indicator in the switch. And we've got the USB-C charging port here. It's quite a nice. Um, fitting here, just for the waterproofing. Alright, it's got some uh, it's got some heat sinking, some fins, not very much. Uh, pretty shallow, not really anything at all, but better than nothing. Uh, we've got the attack bezel here. Um, the tail cap is a, a larger diameter than the battery tube. Um, these ridges uh, they don't allow it to tail stand quite well. Um, I find it's just a bit just not quite uh, stable. I mean it's fine but I, I personally would have liked uh, just a flat surface with um, a lanyard attachment uh, like similar like what they've done on the SP32A um, for tail standing if you have your lanyard through here and the loop going around and over uh, tail standing is going to not be so great um, one other thing that bugged me and it's might be just me but with these edges for the tail cap when it doesn't line up with the switch <laughs> it uh, just bugs me a little bit but um, not a complaint still looks fine um, so moving on so we've got the luminous SST40 um, LED used in here we've got a smooth reflector So this version that I was sent is the cool white version of 6500K. So yeah, I think they've done uh, very well. It's very good to see the double sided clip. A lot of people have been wanting this for quite some time.
just going to go over the UI. Um, there are two mode groups. Uh, the default is stepped modes and the uh, group two is called ramping. So it is a single click on, single click off. Um, while it's on, you would hold down the switch and it will increase the brightness. Um, it will cycle through echo, low, medium, high. Uh, to get to turbo is a double click. Single click to get back down to your previous level. Uh, moving on, uh, from off, if you hold the switch, it will come on in moonlight. And if you hold from here, you can cycle, you can increase the brightness, so that's nice. Don't have to turn it off and then on and then to be able to cycle to a higher level like some of their previous models. It's nice. Um, while it's while the light is on, you can click uh, four times and they will switch over to the ramping mode group. And now you just the same, you just hold down the switch and it will increase or decrease the brightness from lowest to highest to highest to lowest. And then if you want to uh, not go all the way up and all the way down to be able to change direction, you just release the light, uh, the switch for 1.2 seconds and hold it again and it will change direction. So that's great. Um, so uh, one other thing is when you're in turbo, for double click for turbo, if you double click again, it'll go straight down to moonlight. Right, so lockout mode is four clicks from off. Um, if you do, if you hold the switch in lockout, you've got your moonlight. So that's great. So you don't have to. Uh, if you're just wanting a quick little bit of light, you don't want to have to, you know, unlock it, then lock it again. So you've you've got just a bit of light to be able to use. So to exit out of, to unlock the light, you order four clicks, and then you, there you go. I think that's about, oh, we're on to the, we've got strobes, which is three clicks. So that's strobe, double click. That's SOS. Double click again, and that's beacon. So I think, yeah, that's about all. So yeah, pretty, pretty simple. Just a couple of things that I wanted to add about this light um, and show a few other measurements that I took. Um, the first is the beam profile. The, the beam is not actually, it's got some artifacts on it. So as you can see here on this image, um, the center of the hotspot um, has got um, sort of dark a dark ring around the very center and that's just the outside corners of the LED um, I know I can notice it outside to about uh, 60 meters 60 yeah, around 60 meters um, so it bugged me a little bit just because you know small small things like that I, I notice it does bug me a little bit but for the average user they're not going to care they probably won't even notice um, then outside of the hotspot, um, the ring, the outer ring is the corona, and there's a bit of a ring around the outside of the corona. It doesn't uh, fade into the spill so much. Uh, there's a bit of a ring that you can that you'll notice. Um, you know, not not a deal breaker. Still fine, um, but it's just something I should bring up. Uh, the the SC31 Pro uh, doesn't have, it doesn't look like that at all. It's just the hotspot blends in to the rest of the beam, you know, really well. Um, yeah, the spill is not showing up on this image. Just uh, I had to dim it down just to be able to show you the uh, what the beam looked at, looked like. So uh, moving on, um, I ran a turbo test. Uh, this uh, I shut it off at five minutes forty, just because the 
thermal regulations not working on this uh, first batch they will fix it and that means that um, the flashlight will continue to uh, the temperature will continue to rise uh, and you'll have to uh, change it down a level when it gets too hot so after five minutes 40 on turbo it was 80 degrees Celsius so I reckon you'd get about a minute and a half, I think it was a minute and a half of turbo before it hit 50 degrees Celsius. Um, I did run a runtime test on high and that got um, 2 hours 13 minutes on high and as you can see this uh, driver that they've used is got, has got a very good regulation, uh, really good to see. Um, yeah, and then I, the test cut off at 2.8 volts. Uh, so that's good to see that it's got low voltage protection. Um, I tested the charging current, which is in the specs. It says 2 amps, but I measured uh, 1.75 amps, uh, which is good. Uh, full charge. Uh, cut off on the battery with 4.20 volts, so it's great to see that it's not overcharging the battery um, There's a few a few measurements here that I'll throw up for you to to look at um, but the main one that I wanted to point out was the um, parasitic drain on standby and that's very, very uh, low, so that's not going to drain your battery while you've got it turned off. Uh, you know, it's a very, very low drain, you're not going to have to worry about it. 